Good evening, my name is Steve Pereira. Welcome to Bent TV. Tonight we're talking to Nur Fasame, Australia's first and at this point only gay imam. Nur, welcome to Bent TV. Thank you. Nur, in the past year you've had a very public coming out. You've been on national TV, on national press, and national media. Why this public outing? Why this outing in such a public way? I decided in the last year, um, particularly this year, to speak to the media because, I mean, this has been a personal struggle for me. Um, so I just wanted to shed light on it on a national level and put a human face to the problems that I'm talking about. And what specifically are the problems you're talking about? You know, homophobia, Islamophobia, um, you know, this violent, violent reaction to being different. Well, if, if you look at Islamophobia, the, the, the combination of Islam and, and homosexuality, sexuality on basic research, it's not very positive. The number of Islamic countries that still carry the death penalty is about seven. The number of, of, of deaths for two homosexuals, most recently the person in Syria being thrown over, over the rooftop. The Orlando killing, which was, a, which was in some ways an, a, you know, a, 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 a murder done for the Islamic State by somebody who was conflicted about his sexuality. There seems to be an urgent need to, to look at moderate Islam and homosexuality. Is that part of your, the reason for your coming out? The issues that, are, um, that I'm addressing when it comes to homosexuality in the Muslim community has existed and does still exist in many faiths, many um, organized religions. Um, but I am trying to focus and address my community from an angle that is compassionate, that is um, accepting because this is what um, all religions essentially were um, promoting but we have somehow um, constructed these different ideologies um, that are killing our youth so Orlando and this um, ISIS throwing people off roofs and things like that are very very contradictory to um, the basic teachings of my religion, Islam. The real danger is now that we already, thanks to all of the rhetoric around, we've completed Islam with violence, and now we're completing Islam with homophobia. How do we counteract that? How do we address that? We need um, to have platforms that are safe for these discussions to happen. Um, and in order that, for that to happen, what is needed is legislation, government legislation, um, to prevent discrimination. What is needed is um, a safe transition for people who are in environments of conflict and have no um, resources available to them. So obviously funding is needed um, for mental health, for affordable housing, for unemployment, specifically youth unemployment because you know our youth are our leaders of thought in the future and when you kill their confidence based on some outdated interpretation in the name of God you know um, the reaction can be very um, ugly but even now, for instance, in response to your coming out, uh, Kaiser Tarat from this Australian Federation of Islamic Council is still insisting that the Quran is against, and, and Islam, formally and traditionally, is against homosexuals and will not condone any sort of homosexual activity. Faced with that message, how do young Muslims today negotiate that space between the spirituality and the sexuality? Well, that's why I started the group. Um, called Marhaba, which is a social support group that helps youth um, in reconciling or trying to reconcile their faith and their um, sexuality. Um, 
you know, the reference that you have made of the imams, um, this is a clear um, example and proof of the experience that I have had and the knowledge that I have of my community that we have an issue when it comes to um, leadership, faith leadership. And when I started the group, I had an issue with youth um, specifically either leading a double life, um, getting married and falling into those pressures, which happened to me, or um, rejecting their faith, you know, saying, look, I've, I've had enough. And so I had a problem with that because to me, both um, issues are personal and, you know, my identity and my religion, they're very important to me. So to be in an environment that you're told choose one of or the other, I had an issue with that. So how did you resolve that issue though? We facilitated a group called Marhaba and um, we try to um, re-educate the youth in, and manage the trauma that, um, because you're talking about heavy trauma. So, and f in the, for the general public, you know, we need to support these types of organizations that are trying to heal um, the trauma that people have gone through. And my job as an imam is um, I try to um, give them an alternative to the theology that has been encoded in them. But if that alternative is not accepted by the mainstream, are you then not just forming a splinter group away from traditional Islam? And is that addressing the issue? When I say I'm providing an alternative, I mean, the, you always have opposition when you are in mainstream Islam even. And I'm not um, starting something new. All I'm doing is I'm addressing certain vacuums that exist in my community and his religion is used um, to make those vacuums happen. So, and I'm saying that that's not the case. And I use my theological backing to shed light on that. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Pereira, and you've been with myself and Noor Wasame, uh, Australia's first gay mom. Thank you so much for watching.